waving, sharp-toothed beings, strange mice, red-eyed creatures lurking under motel room beds, missing time, and a possible real-life ET case involving an alien left behind in Lake Havasu. In this video, I have decided to wade into some weird cases involving unknown entities. In July 1967, a man driving in East Hanover, New Jersey on a moonless night observed colored blinking lights approximately 150 feet up in the sky to the south. The object was cigar shaped about 50 feet long. To him, the lights appeared to be coming from porthole windows. Inside those windows he could see dark shadowy images, beings peering out. Other shadowy beings could be seen moving about. The object hovered stationary for a few minutes then moved very slowly to the west. Curious, the witness decided to follow in his 1960 Falcon. A quarter of a mile down the road, the witness watched as the object hovered stationary again for a moment and then shot straight up to the south and disappeared. The entire encounter lasted about 10 minutes. Similar shadowy type beings were encountered in 2010 in Omaha, Nebraska. It was November 8, 2010. A married couple taking an evening stroll in a wooded area near their home in Omaha would encounter something very bizarre. They had done this walk numerous times and knew the area quite well. As they approached the wooded area, they could see the lights from the houses beyond the grove shining through the trees. They noticed strange shadows darting through the trees. They assumed that it was some children playing around down in the forest and decided to go and chat with them. As they got closer to the trees, they realized that there was no children around. In fact, there was nobody around at all. Quote, we took a side entrance into the grove and walked into the trees, wondering if the shadows we saw simply came from the light from the houses in the distance, like maybe our eyes were playing tricks on us. The grove was well lit, as there was a lot of moonlight and virtually no leaves left on the trees. It was fairly cold. It happened before the first snowfall, and dead leaves littered the ground, unquote. As they walked along, holding hands into the grove, they heard leaves rustling near them. It was then something crossed their path. Quote, it moved in glimpses as if under a strobe light, only no light was given off. As it crossed our path, it was visible one moment, then gone the next. This alternated as it strode in front of us. It smiled at us and appeared to be waving. I wasn't prepared for this and seeing it froze me in fear." Unquote. The man described the entity as bipedal, standing around 5'10". It had very small black eyes which reflected the moonlight. Its ears were tight against its head. The ears came to a point. Its skin was a dark grayish color and it was nude. Quote, it was completely naked, though no genitalia could be seen. Where human genitals should have been, there appeared to be nothing there, as you would imagine a doll would look." Unquote. The man noted that the entity appeared to smile at them with its odd mouth and sharpened teeth. Quote, the jaw was bigger than any human's. The jawline went all the way up the sides of its head as if its smile started behind its ears almost. Rows of sharp white teeth were visible as it smiled at us. It had slits for a nose that were slightly flared at the top. I can't remember how many fingers it had, but it definitely had digits that it held up as it waved. Unquote. The sighting lasted only a few minutes before the man turned and ran. Holding his wife's wrist, he would practically dragged her out of the grove up the grass hill through the soccer field and into the street. They rushed back to their home. Quote, from our doorstep, we could see the grove of trees. I immediately said, don't say anything, as I didn't want our testimonials to become tainted with any kind of suggestion from one another. I separated us into different rooms and had us write down our testimonials of what we saw. To no surprise, we both described the same entity with the same features, unquote. Whatever they encountered that night, the man contends that it had a negative impact on his life. Quote, this event has affected my life very negatively, as my family thinks my wife and I made it up or are just plain lying to get attention or something. Not knowing what this entity was keeps me up many nights. I must have thought about every possibility. I thought, could it have been a spirit, a human in Hollywood style movie makeup, maybe a Scooby-Doo type hologram projector, or even an alien? To this day, not knowing eats at the back of my mind. Unquote. Just as puzzling as what happened to a woman named Elaine in Cincinnati, Ohio in 1955. While she was only five when the event occurred, 
Elaine has never forgotten it. She recalls going to her aunt's house for a big meal involving her extended family. For some unknown reason, she felt the urge to go outside. As she stepped out into the backyard, she would encounter something very, very odd. Quote, while they were all cooking dinner, for some reason or another, I was just prompted to go outside and I did. And this is where the really weird part is. This mouse, this little gray mouse, like way across the yard that nobody would ever normally see. It was like a little gray mouse. It called to me. It said that I had to come to him for some reason. I went across the whole backyard, came to this little gray mouse and I picked it up. Well, when I put my hand down, it just came up into my hand and then I was just gone. And then that's all I remember. That's the last thing I remember, unquote. When Elaine woke, she was just entering her aunt's house with no memory of where she had been. As she soon discovered, a great deal of time had passed. Even more unsettling was her family's strange behavior. Quote, and then later on, I don't know, I can't remember, somehow I came back into the house and the family just, I mean the family. I'm a five-year-old girl and I was missing for that long. You'd think they would say like, you know, where were you? They said, you missed out on the whole family dinner. We didn't know where you were, which is just, like, not right, because, I mean, who would just let their five-year-old daughter just be gone and not know where she is? There was nothing. They never said, why weren't you here? That made absolutely no sense, unquote. Indeed, the family's odd behavior continued to weigh on her well into her adulthood. There are so many facets of this case that are interesting. What did Elaine see in the backyard? Did she really see a gray mouse, or was it something else? She claims the mouse called to her, but how? Telepathically? One has to wonder if her mind substituted what she actually saw, possibly a non-human entity with something more friendly, like a tiny mouse, or was it merely a hallucination? If so, what of the missing time? Further, what to make of the family's strange behavior? Certainly no parent would allow their five-year-old daughter to run off for a length of time, especially not during a big family meal. As Elaine said, their lack of concern is the most troubling aspect of the entire event. One has to wonder, whomever took Elaine, had they also done something to alter the minds of the family inside the home as well? In the end, this is a puzzling and fascinating case. Recently in Piedmont, Missouri, a 96-year-old woman spoke to a MUFON investigator regarding something she encountered when she was all of 10 years old. Speaking by telephone, the investigator noted that, despite her advanced age, she was still very sharp. Her farm, located outside Piedmont, Missouri, had been in her family since the 1850s. She grew up on it with her mother, father, grandmother, and siblings. When she was a little girl, she recalled how her mother and her grandmother would speak of the little gray people who visited the farm some nights. According to the witness, the stories involving these little gray people had been in the family since before the Civil War. It was the night of August 10, 1930. The woman remembered how she had been made to sleep on the sleeping porch, which was a room situated right beside the porch with a large window. Sometime in the night, something came to her window and looked at her. Quote, I was laying in bed on the porch and I saw a gray being with big eyes walk up to the window and look inside at me. I was frozen in fear. He just kept looking at me. Next thing I knew, there were three of them, all about four feet tall with no hair, big black eyes, small nose and a mouth and thin standing next to my bed and I remember thinking that I had no idea how they got inside. I was even more afraid and wanted to pull the covers up over my face but I couldn't. I don't know what happened after that. The next morning I woke up and they were gone." Unquote. While most people would be quick to chalk this up to a sleep paralysis hallucination, there is more to the story, namely the fact that the whole family seemed to have had similar experiences as well as encountering strange balls of light and a weird humming sound around their farm. Quote, I never saw a craft of any type, but sometimes late at night we would hear a humming sound coming from the low depression area around the pond about a hundred feet from the house, but never went to look to see what it was. I think we were afraid to. We also often saw small white balls of light in the yard and around the farm at dusk and after dusk, but never knew what they were. The lights were about the size of a softball. The events on the farm weighed on the family and it got so bad that they wouldn't even go out after dark. Quote, the whole family was sure to be inside after dark and we just didn't play outside after dark. The older family members made sure we came inside and as I think back on this, it must have been because of the little people who would take us. That is the term my mother and my grandmother used. They would say that the little gray people would take us at night but always brought us back before morning. 
it was almost like talking about fairies or something magical that was our little secret. It was not something we spoke about to other people. We kept it to ourselves and still do to this day, unquote. The witness claims that she has encountered them since then, although her memories of those events are vague. Her children and grandchildren also have claimed to have encountered strange things on this farm. In a similar type of case that may or may not be connected to aliens occurred in 1958, in 2013, a 55-year-old man named Ronald told Stephen Wagner of ParanormalAbout.com about what he saw while on a trip to Tucson, Arizona with his aunt when he was 10 years old. He recalled that his aunt Roma was driving. They had stopped off at a cheap motel to eat, shower, and get some sleep. Ronald recalled that it was a very tiny room with one double bed that they had to share. There was a window near the side of the bed that he was sleeping on and the shade was half pulled down. As he sat reading a book, Ronald glanced over at the window and saw what looked like glowing red eyes peering in at him. Quote, I knew this was impossible because we were on the second floor and there was no balcony or stairs near the window. Unquote. Terrified, he begged his aunt to pull the shade down. She was already half asleep and ignored him. Quote, I didn't even tell her what I saw. I just kept begging her to pull the shade. Suddenly, I felt and heard a whooshing sound come out from under the bed. I distinctly felt a hand grip me by the neck in an almost stranglehold. The hand pushed me down on the pillow. I could not breathe or talk. I was terrified and really thought I was going to die. I was able to flail my arm though and began tapping Aunt Roma really hard. She thought I was just bugging her to pull the shade so she got up. As soon as she got up, the hand released my neck and I heard and felt the same whooshing as it went back under the bed. I caught my breath and began crying." Unquote. It was then the aunt got up and closed the shade. Ronald insisted there was something under the bed. She proceeded to look but found nothing. He told her of what he saw at the window and of the hand reaching under the bed and grabbing him by the throat. The aunt insisted that it was nothing more than a bad dream and that he should just forget it. Quote, she said I must have been having a nightmare. I asked her how I could have been having a nightmare when I was wide awake reading my book. Even a 10-year-old knows when he is wide awake, unquote. The next morning, Ronald checked out his neck in a mirror as it was still sore and discovered red marks like fingerprints on his neck. He showed them to his aunt, who suggested that he had done it to himself in his sleep. Quote, I gave up trying to convince her, but I know that it definitely happened. I just don't know why and never will, unquote. In 1982, Steven Spielberg released E.T. the Extraterrestrial. In the film, an alien being is left behind and desperately tries to find a way home. Interestingly, in 2002, two brothers hiking in the desert near Lake Havasu in Arizona may have encountered an alien being that had been left behind. The witness, a man named Scott and his brother, had gone out on a hike into the desert with their uncle's two dogs. They were hoping to find some coyotes. Instead, they would discover something much more frightening began with a wailing scream. Quote, we brought my uncle's two dogs with us and as we were out on the trail we heard kind of like a, I guess we'll call it a wailing type scream and the dog started to whine so we were like okay this is kind of weird and so we decided to go see what it was and we walked over the hill. Unquote. Just over the hill about 300 yards away the two brothers would observe a non-human entity with dark green skin. To them it appeared upset. Quote, it was screaming at the sky, like looking up and throwing rocks around and the dogs at that point started to growl. Me and my brother were kind of just standing there in shocked silence and it looked directly in our direction. It stopped what it was doing and it looked right at us. At that point my brother was just like, we gotta get out of here. And so we booked it back over to get back to the house, unquote. What did Scott and his brother see that day? What was the entity and what was it doing out there in the desert? As evidenced by its screaming at the sky, one might assume that it maybe had been left behind either by accident or deliberately. Scott added that to him, the entity appeared to be in distress, although unlike Spielberg's movie, these two brothers felt no compulsion to take this E.T. home with them.